ನಮೋ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಾಲಿ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮೀತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರೀ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಭಾಷತಾಯೇಷತಾರಿಣಿ ನಮೋ ಮಹಾವದನ್ಯಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪದಾಯತೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಮನೆ ಗೌತಸ್ವೇ ನಮಃ ವಂಶಕಲ್ಪಾತರೂಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧೂಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೇಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಗೋಪೇಶ್ ಗೋಪಿಕಾಂತ ರಾಧಾಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೋರಾಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವಿಶ್ವಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಜೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೇತ ಗಧ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌಭಕ್ತೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ so we started this light of bhagwa series around approximately 2 years or somewhere around that time and the subject matter of the theme of this series was to discuss various topics from shrimad bhagavatam now because in maybe 3 to 4 weeks from now we as a community are traveling to vrindavan yatra hum at least apni community ko pehli baar vrindavan yatra ke liye lekar ja rahe hain so there was a request that came that uh several devotees requested why don't we have something on vrindavan dham so that's for which we had a first session previous sunday uh where our speaker very beautifully spoke about what should be the mood uh, what should be the attitude what should be the quality of a sadhaka who is trying to enter vrindavan he may discuss different and various attributes so see theme ko aaj continue karte hue uh i would begin the parikrama but before we begin the parikrama we'll also do the little of setting of the mood setting the scene as i say so now the series or the topics that we'll talking about forests of grace there are 12 forests identified in vrindavan region according to padma puran so hum uski parikrama ki charcha karenge par shuruaat karne se pehle i would like to uh make few statements about shila prabhupad ji uh just to uh as a as a honor and as to acknowledge i was born and brought up just maybe less than 100 kilometers from vrindavan but i went to vrindavan after visiting america getting a copy of bhagavad gita and knowing that there is something called as vrindavan which is very glorious so very next year i ran back to india just to visit vrindavan maine kaha itne saal vrindavan ke paas raha aur baaki bihari temple the famous temple some or i don't know why but delhi it's love baaki bihari so our family had got they have some ashram there which i have never visited but none wahan par ek room banwaya tha so you know they had done some construction there so my mama ji would every month go to baaki bihari temple and will get a big prasadam box and he knew i loved sweets so he would always send those sweets to my home which was just you know we were let's say 20 kilometers away from each other home my home and mama ji's home so america mein jab main gaya jab mujhe bhagavad gita mere hath mein aayi aur maine padhna shuru kara aur phir vrindavan ke bare mein pata chala to sabse pehli cheez jo mere dimag mein vrindavan ko lekar yaad aayi wo thi vrindavan ke sweets kyunki mujhe utna hi pata tha <laughs> i had no idea of it 
But after going there and coming across Srila Prabhupada's movement and his devotees, then I got to know about a little bit about Vrindavan. Bacha party, front seat se aapko last seat pe bhejdiya jayega agar aap log shant nahi rahe. All right? So, shh, a pin drop silence or you will go on to the last page. So, if you take a look at Srila Prabhupada's life, not going too much in details about it, all of us are aware, we have discussed many times. Srila Prabhupada ji, kehne ko to apne vana prastha aur sanyas agar ashram ki baat kari jaye, he was happily situated in Vrindavan. In fact, abhi hum kuch shastra se quote karenge about Vrindavan. And he said that the goal of life is to go and settle in Vrindavan. Or Vrindavan mein hi apna jeevan vitit karna. From one perspective, Srila Prabhupada had that opportunity. Prabhupada ji ne apne grahastha jeevan ki responsibility ni baat chuke te. And he had very firmly, he had got settled in Vrindavan. He was busy doing his services, writing and what not. He could have continued, but because there was a higher calling, because the instruction of his spiritual master was there, he decided to leave Vrindavan. And he left Vrindavan. Now that's an interesting thing. Agar Shastra mein agar kaha gaya hai ki sabse sarvashesh thaan agar Vrindavan hai, to wahi sadhu mahatma jo vishwabhar mein jake Vrindavan ki jo mahima saapit karne wale hai, wo Vrindavan ko chhodke kyo jayenge. And the point is, Vrindavan is not only limited to a place. It's something very important for us to understand before we begin our parikrama, before we begin our yatra. Vrindavan is not only a demography or geographical location. Vrindavan is actually more of a consciousness. So although Srila Prabhupada Ji was in Vrindavan, but the matter of fact is, Javidur Ji, Yudhishthira Maharaj se milne ke liye aate hain, first canto, I believe it is the 13th chapter, usme Yudhishthira Maharaj kehte hain, Bhavad Vida Bhagavata Tirtha Bhuta Swayam Vibhu Tirthi Kurvanti Tirthani Svanta Sena Gada Bharata so Yudhishthira Maharaj Vidur Ji ko dekhe kehte hain, Hey Vidur Ji, aap vahse to teeth yatra pe gaye the. Parantu, aapke hirde mein swayam, kyunki Bhagawan virajman rahte hain, jiske karan vash, aap jaha jaha gaye, wo apne aap mein hi teeth ban gaya. So kehne ka taat pere, yes, Shila Prabhupada Ji did leave Vrindavan, but Shila Prabhupada Ji jaha jaha gaye, usko noh ne Vrindavan mein pavitit kar diya. And because of his efforts, we got some idea or access to Vrindavan. I'll make a one small example and begin our presentation for today. I believe ye Visala Prabhu, Prabhupada Ji ke jo I believe that was his name. So Prabhupada Ji ke sang wo pehli baar Vrindavan Parikrama ke liye the. Prabhupada Ji started Vrindavan Parikrama as a yatra in 1971 onwards. Tab tak wahe America mein hi rehka aur Europe mein prachar kar rahe the. 1971 he came back to India and then he started focusing on building the three famous temples in India. Krishna Balram Temple in Vrindavan, Radha Madhav Temple in uh, Mayapur, and then uh, uh, Apna, Juhu Project, Radha, Ras Vihari Temple at Juhu. So, just like you know, you have read in the books, you have heard about Vrindavan, imagine you are now with Prabhupada Ji. And those in the days in 1970, they were not much four wheeler. It was all greenery, there was forest everywhere, such a beautiful place. And with Srila Prabhupada, he's out on Vrindavan Parikrama. And wo bade hi mein, Prabhupada ji ke piche, somehow, just you know, spontaneously, some like when your heart is full of innocence, you don't actually re recognize also Aspas kya hai. He began to scream, Vrindavan ki jai, Vrindavan ki jai. You know, nari lagate na, Vrindavan ki jai, Vrindavan ki jai. <laughs> Prabhupada ji stopped and he looked behind and he said, Oh, so you like Vrindavan? And he was, Vishala Prabhupada was so much absorbed in that move. Vrindavan ki jai, Prabhupada, Vrindavan ki jai. So Prabhupada again said, Oh, so you like Vrindavan? And now he came back a little bit in his consciousness. He said, Yes, Prabhupada, Vrindavan is so nice. And then Prabhupada, uh, what do you say, snapped his finger and he said, All right, Vrindavan is yours. So the point here is, this is a little pastime. I wanted to open with particularly with this pastime to highlight. It is actually a pure devotee who can give us access to Vrindavan. And actually it's because of Srila Prabhupada, all of us have got some opportunity to really understand Vrindavan. So I have particularly got a copy of Krishna book here. I told our devotees keep a copy of Krishna book here. Because this is this is one book which gives us access to Vrindavan. Uh, this is uh, something I would say a must 
have and a must read book shri prabhupada ji gave a formula he said in the morning hours we should read philosophy like bhagavad gita shrimad bhagavatam and in the night before we go off to bed we should read krishna book to raat ko krishna mai sapne aayenge bhut pret ke nahi aayenge jinko unke adhik aate hain unko ek ghante pad ke sona chahiye sapne badal jayenge anyways so all of you those who are joining for yatra i would say you can pick up this book and start reading uh, i'll be recommending certain chapters today in presentation also to read and as i said on the group i'm sending certain sections to read on uh, to prepare our consciousness not only that shila prabhupad uh, you know he taught he traveled around shila prabhupad one of the major contribution of his in giving us uh, access to vrindavan as i said are his books and in his books are his purports and his purports prabhupad ji have beautifully explained what it means by vrindavan vrindavan consciousness how to enter vrindavan or what should we be careful of so i like to begin this presentation with making two quotations from shila prabhupada's purports on two very important points first shila prabhupada in one of his purports which i am about to quote and read here describes the spiritual potency of residing in vrindavan ye main point kisi particular objective se discuss kar raha hu i'll reveal that as we continue to uh, discuss further let's begin with that what does shila prabhupada speaks on the potency of residing in vrindavan dham shila prabhupada writes this is just a part of a purport this is from ninth canto yayati maharaj uh, is speaking about you know now i have spent my life in sense gratification i should go to the forest and then prabhupada talks about what forest yayati was speaking about and there prabhupada writes this is just a part of it shila prabhupada writes cultivating krishna consciousness in vrindavan is the best means of being liberated from material bondage for in vrindavan one can automatically meditate upon krishna vrindavan has many temples in one or more of these temples one may see the form of the supreme lord as shri shri radha krishna krishna balram and meditate upon this form as expressed here by the words brahmani adhyaya one should concentrate one's mind upon the supreme lord para brahman this para brahman is krishna as confirmed by arjuna in bhagavad gita param brahma param dhama pavitram param ambhavan krishna and his abode vrindavan are non different so please highlight this point for ourselves so when we go to vrindavan uh, we should not just consider it as an ordinary place we should be very careful that we should maintain the cleanliness it is not that we consider it to be an ordinary piece of land and we throw things around or we spit around those kind of a things it is not it's considered to be a dham aparad i speak about dham aparad and all that later on let's begin our story today so it's non different shri chaitanya mahaprabhu said aradhyo bhagavan vrajesh tanaya tad dham vrindavanam same point krishna and vrindavan are non different vrindavan is as good as krishna therefore even saran somehow or other gets the opportunity to live in vrindavan and if one is not a pretender but simply lives in vrindavan and concentrates his mind upon krishna one is liberated from material bondage but there is always a but in a story what is a but if one's mind is not purified however even in vrindavan if one is agitated by lusty desires one should not live in vrindavan so whenever there are recommendations in the scriptures they are always on the side of yama and yama do's and don'ts so if it is prescribed one should live in vrindavan then it is also prescribed in what condition one should not live in vrindavan so i want to balance the equation here so i'm just reading further one should not live in vrindavan and commit offenses for a life of offenses in vrindavan is no better than the lives of the monkeys and the hogs there many monkeys and hogs live in vrindavan and they are concerned with their sexual desires men who have gone to vrindavan but who still hanker for sex should immediately leave vrindavan and stop their grievous offenses at the lotus feet of the lord there are many misguided men who live in vrindavan 
to satisfy their sexual desires, but they're certainly no better than the monkeys and hogs. Those who are under the control of Maya, and specifically under the control of lusty desires, are called Maya Mrig. Indeed, everyone in the conditional stage of material life is a Maya Mrig. It is said, Maya Mrigam Daityo Stam Anvaha Davats. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took sannyas to show his causeless mercy to the Maya Mragas, the people of the material world. One should follow the principles of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and always think of Krishna in full Krishna consciousness. Then, this is a very important line. Uh, we sometimes just read a part of the purpose or a line of the purpose, not the full. Then one will be eligible to live in Vrindavan. And his life will be successful. So yes, the scriptures may give you injunction to live in Vrindavan, but actually it is the Acharyas who tells you, are you qualified to live in Vrindavan or not? So like that, Prabhupada begins, or we are beginning our conversation with the spiritual potency of Vrindavan Dham. First thing, Vrindavan is not different than Krishna. And living there and practicing devotional life is a perfection of life. And going back home, back to God is confirmed, sure shot. But there are conditions, prerequisites. What is that? One's mind should be completely purified. Now somebody may say, Prabhu, my mind is totally purified. Don't doubt me. I am not doubting anyone, by the way. But I am good to go. But there is a little challenge. What is a challenge? Prabhu challenges our scriptures. There are beautiful descriptions given in scriptures. I would be sharing all of you with you as the series goes on over here or else in Vrindavan. The Vrindavan is such a beautiful place. But unfortunately, when I go today... When I see it, I don't find it beautiful. It looks like so dirty, so polluted, so much traffic, so much congestion. You know, the monkeys, tawba, tawba, tawba. Jina haram kar dete hain. Bichare jin ke chashme hain, unka to bhoot hi mushkil hai. Abhi to chashma chhodo, abhi to mobile phone bhi hamla karne lage hain. And you know, and there is no guarantee, even if you give them two, three bananas or the, what do you call that? Fruity, they will even return back. So there is a, another kind of terrorism going on. So how do you, how, how can we, you know, understand Vrindavan? So another very, very beautiful purport, Shira Prabhupada describes. This is from Chaitanya Charitamit. How do we see Vrindavan? Again, this is setting the mood. When we go to Vrindavan, be ready what our consciousness is. Materialists consider Vrindavan Dham as an unclean city because there are many monkeys and dogs there. And along the bank of Yamuna, there is a refuse. Some time ago, a materialistic man asked me, Why are you living in Vrindavan? Why have you selected such a dirty place to live after retiring? Such a person cannot understand that the earthly Vrindavan Dham is always a representation of the original Vrindavan Dham. Consequently, Vrindavan Dham is a worshipable as Lord Krishna. Aradhyo Bhagavan Rajesh Taniyastha Dhamma Vrindavanam. According to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Krishna and his abode are non different. Sometimes, metalist people who have no spiritual understanding go to Vrindavan as tourists. So, we are not going as a tourist there. So the first thing is, we are going as a Yatri. There is a lot of difference between a Yatri and a tourist. We have not signed up on a tour package and with certain facilities. When you go to for Yatra, the things are not under the control of manager. Although you may catch a manager, but things are directly under the control of the Lord. And how he wants to bestow you, your own karma, is between you and him. Don't come to manager. <laughs> okay? But although we'll take care of all the facilities are provided. But nonetheless, one who goes to Vrindavan with such materialistic vision, which means as a tourist, cannot derive any spiritual benefit. Some people only go for Yatra only for one exclusive purpose, shopping. Vrindavan has become a famous shopping hub. So before the Yatra, the requests begin to come. Prabhuji, schedule me shopping ka time nahi dikhra. So, I mean, it's, it's a very good consciousness to go for Vrindavan, isn't it? Right in the beginning, the consciousness is not to Vrindavan, but to, you know, I have a shopping list. So, these all are materialistic vision. Now, you may say, Prabhuji, be practical. 
be realistic about it so i don't want to repeat what i repeated in the morning <laughs> but what does it mean by realistic <laughs> such a person is not convinced that krishna and vrindavan are identical since they are identical vrindavan is as worshipable as lord krishna shila prabhupada in one of uh, the short books i believe on the path to perfection they propose right how should one enter vrindavan one should enter in the mood of akrura how did akrura enter in vrindavan the moment he entered or reached the boundary of vrindavan he immediately got down from his chariot and began to roll in the dirt or the dust of vrindavan thinking krishna every single particle of vrindavan identifies with krishna and in that ecstasy he was shri chaitanya mahaprabhu personally renovated vrindavan dham and advised his chief disciples rupa and sanatan to develop it and open it to attract the spiritual vision of the general populace at present there are about 5000 temples in vrindavan and more this is when back in 1970 prabhu pad wrote it fast forward 50 years there will be another 2000 temples every house is a temple vrindavan is such an amazing place such an amazing place you look anywhere if the monkeys allow you to look here and there if you have the blessings of them and they don't disturb you if you look around here and there every house literally has a deity of shri shri radha and krishna every house literally so this is back then popa the saying 5000 temples back in 1970 and still our society the international society for krishna consciousness is constructing a huge magnificent temple for the worship of lord krishna and lord balram along with shri shri radha krishna and guru goranga since there is no prominent krishna balram temple in vrindavan we are attempting to construct one all right but moving forward sometimes metalists now this is something when you go to vrindavan you will see varieties of people varieties of sadhus now from that perspective sometimes metalists forgetting the past times of radha krishna and krishna balram go to vrindavan accept the lands spiritual facilities and engage in material activity this is against the teaching of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu we might go in the full mood oh we are going to gokul we are going to vrindavan brajwasis but we'll still find people engaging in all kind of fruitive activities because they have come with that objective like that so in other words you might find somebody charging you little extra money maybe for an auto ride or maybe for the things that they are selling don't lose your temple if you don't like it walk away but don't get into an argument this is this is not the mood the prakrita sahajyas proclaim themselves rajwasis or dhamwasis or they mainly engaged in sense gratification thus they become more and more implicated in the materialistic way of life those who are pure devotees in krishna consciousness condemn their activities which means we don't do that same activity when you when in case you come across don't tell them anything you know don't do that okay what popa saying kanna means they don't do those activities that's the idea ha huh? you don't say you quoted the purpose but popa only said to maine usko ek aad gali de di prem se to kya problem hai okay the eternal rajwasi is like sort of the other now this is another point begins the eternal rajwasi like swarup damodar did not even come to vrindavan dham श्री पुंडरिक विद्यानिधि श्री हरिदास ठाकुर श्रीवास पंडित शिवानंद सेन श्री रामानंद राय श्री सिखी महिति श्री माधवी देवी दादाधार पंडित नेवर विजिटेड वृंदावन धाम शिला भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती ठाकुर पॉइंट्स आउट दैट वी हैव नो ऑथराइज्ड डॉक्यूमेंट्स स्टेटिंग दैट दीज एग्जॉल्टेड पर्सनैलिटीज विजिटेड वृंदावन दिस इज द थर्ड सब्जेक्ट मैटर इन दिस प्रोपत कंटिन्यूस नंदलेस वी फाइंड मेनी नॉन डिवोटी mayavadis pretending to be devotees prakrita sahajyas karmis etc etc going to vrindavan to live many of these people go there to solve their economic problems by becoming beggars although anyone living in vrindavan somehow or other is benefited the real vrindavan is appreciated only by a pure devotee as stated in brahma samhita preman jana charita bhakti vilochnena when one has purified eyes he can see that shri vrindavan and the original goloka vrindavan planet in the spiritual sky are identical so how do we see dham dham are not seen by the eyes 
dhama seen by the shastra chakshu by hearing therefore we have certain by default conditionings we all have that and one conditioning is we are very eager to see we want to travel different different places and see but shila prabhu saying that is not how you see we can only see if we have heard enough about that place from shastra chakshu then you can perceive the true vrindavan not otherwise otherwise we'll only see the monkeys hogs and dogs shila navatan das thakur shrinivas acharya shila jagannath das baba ji shri bhagwan das baba ji maharaj shila ga kishor das baba ji and later shila bhaktino thakur always engaged in naam bhajan and certainly did not live anywhere but vrindavan so we started with the discussion is that everyone should live in vrindavan so now then popa said unless you are qualified do not live then i brought to the third point how do we see vrindavan and the discussion was based on shastra chakshu only then you can see or in the association of pure devotees we should never visit dham alone dham should only be visited in the association of devotees and now comes the next point through the series of proper that i'm showing here just to set little benchmark for our level of consciousness here now popa is saying even the best of the vaishnavas great acharya they did not even reside in vrindavan some of them even not visited vrindavan even once yet they were always engaged in nama bhajan so i started our presentation today saying vrindavan is not a demographic location vrindavan is a consciousness and therefore in the right in the beginning we saw if you don't have that consciousness even in vrindavan you may not belong to vrindavan so what is important wherever we live is to cultivate the consciousness of vrindavan and that is developed through shastra chakshu presently the members of the hari krishna movement throughout the world live in a metrically opulent cities like pune london new york what not however we are satisfied with following in the footsteps of shila bhakti nor thakur and other acharyas because we live in the temples of radha krishna shila popa said is kon is vrindavan is non different than vaikuntha and continuously hold hari naam sankirtan the chanting of hari krishna we consequently live in vrindavan and nowhere else we are also following in the footsteps of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu by attempting to construct a temple in vrindavan for our disciples throughout the world to visit hari krishna i will not revisit philosophy now i'll go to the stories now okay <laughs> i mean before i get into past times i just wanted to you know have a little set of understanding otherwise it will become too cheap to talk about it we will get into it for every presentation i would quote certain uh, shastras which describes the glories of vrindavan and today i'll quote three scriptures for that and then we'll begin our parikrama this is lord shri krishna speaking to narad muni this is found in the text called as gautamiya tantra i have not included the verses it will become longer presentation and lord shri krishna tells narad muni every part of this beautiful vrindavan is my abode every creature or demigod who lives in this place will attain goloka dham after death the coward girls who live in my abode are yoginis the five yojanas of vrindavan forest i like my body and the spinal cord of the body is the kalindi yamuna which flows with nectar and water devas and devis live here in invisible bodies and i living within every being never leave vrindavan dham my appearance and disappearance has been enacted in every age and i'll prove it when we begin our parikrama the divine and glorious illumination of this place is beyond worldly vision the glories of vrindavan are beyond anyone's calculation people say vrindavan covers 16 krosha and in the shastra it is said vrindavan extends five yojanas whoever has darshan of govinda in vrindavan never goes to yamalay but attains the destination of the pure and pious persons the temple of shri govindev is situated in vrindavan and is always surrounded by the devotees shila prabodhan and saraswati in his famous writing called as shri vrindavan mahima amrit writes even lives in the earthly land of vrindavan or even touches it 
or even sees it or travels like we're gonna do it we're gonna do all of it meditates upon it bows down to offer respect to it sings or hear we are hearing about it carries its dust on his head or has any relationship with Vrindavan Dham then this purifying earthly Vrindavan will carry him to the supreme abode of Vrindavan in the spiritual world what is the objective of organizing Yatra? Prabhupada in his purpose very clearly writes I'll just give you the essence of just over here the idea of Yatra is you know we hear about this wonderful things like we're hearing now now when we go to Yatra we're gonna further speak about those places now because you have not visited you may not have that connection right now but imagine just replace the situation and let's say we are sitting at the foothill of Govardhan and we discuss about Govardhan Leela there that experience will stay forever thereafter whenever you would hear the name of Govardhan you'll remember that evening when you sat at the foothill of Govardhan and you heard about Govardhan that is the point here therefore Yatra is for that purpose we can whatever we hear we have an experience of it in Yatra we visit those places we hear about those places so anytime there in the future we hear the name of Vrindavan you would immediately remember Vrindavan just like some of us who have gone to Yatras uh, many times we you know try out that we'll take out some time in the morning hours we'll go sit next to the Ganges maybe if in Mayapur or elsewhere to chant and if that has created an impact on your consciousness anytime anywhere now you sit and chant the moment you will put your hand in the bead bag you'll feel like as if you have come to the banks of Ganges at Navadip Dham that is how potent are the Yatras and how they create an impact and that's the point here this purifying earthly Vrindavan will carry him to the supreme abode of Vrindavan in the spiritual world Garga Samhita says visiting Vrindavan Garga Muni uh, Garga Samhita is equal to have darshan of the supreme personality of God just visiting Vrindavan is like but how do we visit Vrindavan not alone with association of devotees there was a point which was made before so the best way to experience Dham is to go on Parikrama. What is Parikrama? How is this Parikrama word has come into existence? Parikrama word comes from Pradakshina. You know Pradakshina Sanskrit word? Pradakshina is to circumambulate the deity, the holy place. And from that Pradakshina comes Parikrama. So therefore, when you go to Vrindavan, any holy place, a dham, the best way to visit and experience the dham is to go on Parikrama. So there are many Parikramas which are famous. There is one, uh, you know, half day Parikrama of Vrindavan, where you circumambulate the whole Vrindavan. Then there is Govardhan Parikrama. And then there is a whole Braj Mandal Parikrama like that. And that's how we experience. And who taught us about this? This whole idea of Parikrama was taught to us by none other than she. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who appeared in this world in 1486 when the year was 1515 somewhere around the age of 28 to 29 when he was that old. That time Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu for the first time finally he reached Vrindavan. And in our course of presentation we will try to follow his path that he took in Parikrama. So I'll, I was thinking, how do I do this presentation? How do I set your mood before we actually begin the Yatra? So we're also going to follow the same trajectory and the same path that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took on his Brajmandal Parikrama as much as we can cover in our presentations here. So to begin with, how was Vrindavan when Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu arrived? Um, I like to speak on history so I cannot skip it. So I like to give you a little bit of history about it. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Chaitanya Charitamit mentions, I'll just give you some additional details. When Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reached Vrindavan, most of the Leela Stalis had disappeared. In history, there have been two instances when Vraj Leela or Leela Stalis had disappeared. There were no Leela Stalis remaining. And twice in the history, the Leela Stalis had to be established. Today I'll speak about how Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went and he saw there were no Leela Salis and then he instructed his disciple Rupa and Sanatan to establish Leela Salis. In the next presentation I'll speak about when it was the first time when the Leela Salis had disappeared and who established the Leela Salis for the first time. Let's come back to this presentation. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu 
So, just to give you an example, one day he was walking through a particular village and there he asked the name to somebody, what is the name of this village? And he said the name of this village is Asita Gram or Arita Gram, Arita Gram. Now this name Arita Gram is not originally Arita Gram, original name is Arista Gram. Arista Gram name comes from it's a place where a demon by the name of Arista Sur was killed. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, knowing the whole background, although there is a Supreme Person in Godhead, knowing that what had happened in Arista, Arista Gram or what had happened after Arista Sur was killed, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu immediately asked that person, Oh, this is Arista Gram. Where is Radha Kund? Where is Shama Kund? That Brajabrasi even didn't knew about Radha Kund and Shama Kund. He said, Radha Kund, Shama Kund? There is no place like this in Arista Gram. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went out searching for it and then he came across two rice paddies. One was Kaliya and second was Gauri. And then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu understood. Kaliya means Shamakund, Gauri means Radha Kund. And there was a puddle of water. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu just took, you know, he could sprinkle some water on his head and these are the same places where later on Ram, uh, Shamakund and Radha Kund was excavated again, which had disappeared. Now, why it had disappeared, I'm going to come back to it in a short while. We'll continue with our discussion and I'll tell you what had happened in the history because of which this Leela series had disappeared. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, first time when he reached, he entered Mathura. And in Mathura also, he straight went to a very interesting place by the name of Vishrama Ghat. There are two things, you know, Shrama Evahi Kevalam. So you can say there is Vishram and there is Parishrama. Anyways, I don't want to get into the book, everything here. But Vishram Ghat. So, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he entered Mathura, the very first thing he visited was Vishram Ghat. He went and he took bath there. The same place in Dwapar Yuga, Lord Sri Krishna had also come. And he had come to this Vishram Ghat to come and take rest. But before that, he took a bath. And what had happened prior to that? Krishna had just killed Kamsa. He had killed all of the demons. And then from that pavilion, he came straight to Vishram Ghat and came and took bath here and settled here. And that's how Vishram Ghat from 5,000 years is famous for. Generally, Braj Mandal Parikrama begins from Vishram Ghat. If Mathura is the first stop, then it begins with Vishram Ghat where devotees take bath. It has many, many uh, historical Ghat or places around it. Those are not my you know, subject matter for to go into details, but this is a little information about it. However, the Lord did not visit this place in Kali Yuga or in Dwapar Yuga only. Vishram Ghat had a far greater history. The Lord appeared here and visited Vishram Ghat and even took bath in Vishram Ghat also in Satya Yuga. Does anyone know who came in Satya Yuga and took bath? And actually from that incident, the name came Vishram Ghat. And from that, the name have continued as Vishram Ghat, which is at the bank of Yamuna. And the story goes to Varaha Dev. When Lord Varaha had actually killed, okay, let me just go a little bit in back. Uh, it's worthwhile also to mention. Lord had appeared in a boar incarnation. Now, sewer, right? We call it boar as sewer. I mean, why would Lord appear? I mean, Sewer is the most disgusted animals among all animals. What is the need for Lord to come as boar? So Srila Prabhupada, just to help you understand this, why would Lord take this form? Srila Prabhupada explained, what had happened was, when this Bhu Mandala had drowned in Garbhodak Ocean, it went right at the bottom. And the nature of water is, wherever water gets collected, at the bottom it gets covered with, settled with all the dirt. All the contamination gets settled, which means where the water is cut from, the bottom is the most dirty in the bottom. So Srila Prabhupada explained, Hog is the best animal if we want to get anything from the most nasty place. Therefore, Lord took the form of a hog. So what happened when Devtas went to Brahma Ji? He said, we have gone to the moon. Here in the world, 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 in the
हाहाकार फैला हुआ है सॉरी <laughs> सृष्टि में हाहाकार फैला हुआ है यू नो प्लीज सेव एंड बम्मा जी थॉट यू नो हाउ डू आई सेव हैव टू सेव यू नो हैव टू रियली मेक माय सेल्फ डर्टी बाय गोइंग देयर सो बम्मा जी सेड नो 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 आई कैन नॉट एंड ही वाज जस्ट थिंकिंग लाइक दैट व्हाट टू डू एंड सडनली फ्रॉम हिज नोस्ट्रिल केम आउट दिस वहा ऑफ द एंड बम्मा जी वाज अमेज्ड एट दिस इनकारनेशन दिस ऑफ द व्हिच हैज नेवर एवर बीन सीन बिफोर एंड दिस वहा ऑफ द टुक अ ह्यूज शिप अ ह्यूज शेप and went right into the ocean and brought bhumandala on his tusk and put it into his place long story short brahma ji was so astonished so astonished he decided to carve a deity of varadev and from that day onward he began to worship varadev and he carved a deity more or less of the same shape where varadev is holding a bhumandala Nonetheless, going back to Varadev, Varadev killed Hiranyaksha after establishing Bhumandal at his place, and after killing Hiranyaksha, Hiranyaksha, Varadev came to Mathura. At that time, it was not Mathura; it was only a Van. I will tell you when Mathura became Mathura in my next, uh, just after this, completing this story. So Varadev came to the bank of Yamuna, and where he took bath, that place became Vishram Ghat. and from that day it became auspicious can you imagine the place the water where it touched the body the supreme personality guarded how auspicious would be and then later in treta yuga also lord went there dwapar yuga lord shri krishna and then in kaliyuga shri chaitanya mahaprabhu personally went there so after we finish our darshan at vishram ghat then we come out there is a dwarkadish temple and right next to dwarkadish temple there are two temples of varadev shrimad bhagavatam third canto talks about there are two varaha lal varaha and shwet varaha and there is this deity of lal varaha dev established this is the deity which was carved by brahma ji in satya yuga and personally worshiped by him after long long time being pleased at kuvel brahma ji gave this deity of varadev to kuvel and by worshiping varadev kuvel became more and more rich and when his cousin brother ravana attacked kuvel he stole this deity from kuvel brought it to lanka and that is how ramayan explain that ravana was able to build his gold city by worshiping kuvel he was also worshiping uh, uh, varadev and then when lord ram killed ravana then lord ram brought this varadev deity from lanka to ayodhya and then in one particular yuga that is treta yug this deity of varadev came from ayodhya to mathura how it came i'll come back to that story in a short while we'll pause here so this is the deity which has established by brahma ji personally carved by brahma ji and it has some very significant feature what is that ironically all the recent photographs of varadev show lifting earth but actually it was not earth that has drowned if you understand the vedic cosmology that cannot drown it's a part of a bhumandala structure either you drown the whole bhumandala you cannot just pick detach one thing and drown so it was a whole bhumandala that had drowned so if the pujari is kind enough if we get a chance we'll try our best when we go in our par- parikrama when you go closer to the deity you see what varadev is holding is not a globe he is holding a disk and in that disk you have tall mountains as the fifth canto of shrimad bhagavatam describes how bhumandala looks like so when i saw this for the first time i was like wow this is dt which is carved by brahma ji himself and what is another evidence shila bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur and all his parikramas would every time go to this temple which also further gives an evidence that it is not a made up story that this is an ancient dt but in fact bhakti siddhanta saraswati thakur accepted this after taking darshan of varadev then shri chaitanya mahaprabhu dwarkadish temple has been literally uh, recently constructed 
so it wasn't there then shri chaitanya mahaprabhu from vishram ghat went to varadev temple and from there he went to the next temple of mathura keshav dev temple what is keshav dev temple this is also called as adi keshav temple didi actually here was called as originally was called as adi keshav this was established by bajrnab the name of the deity was adi keshav and sometime you call it keshav maharaj or adi keshav different names but it's a same temple so what was this keshav dev temple what was this place or situation was this is said to be a birth place of lord shri krishna this is a place where krishna had appeared this is not the palace of kamsa but it was the prison cell of kamsa where bhagwan shri krishna had appeared <coughs> Chapter one to chapter three of Krishna book talks about the birth of Krishna. <clears throat> And next time we revisit Mathura in Krishna book is I believe from forty one chapter to forty fourth chapter, when Akrura brings Krishna back to Mathura. And then Krishna enters Mathura, and then he gets into the fight with Kamsa finally and kills Kamsa. So these are the couple of chapters where Mathura pastimes are described. Now one thing interesting about Kamsa worth just making a point here. Kamsa was son. What was Kamsa's father's name? You know, I was thinking I'm gonna do some presentations here, which will be based on little research, and I might based on this presentation. Those of you are coming for yatra, I'm telling you, I'm releasing the paper. And every day during yatra, when I'm gonna have a katha, I'm gonna ask you questions, not based on what I'm gonna speak there, what I've spoken now. All right. because this is all research material uh, based on and then i'll see how many of you remember and whoever will give the correct answer will try to give them govardhan ka famous kya wo som papdi right som papdi as a prize then and there <laughs> how many of you are ready now <laughs> so whoever will give the correct answer then and there anyways in the first four days we are in govardhan getting som papdi will be easy after vrindavan aapko vrindavan ke pede khilayenge so here attentively okay so kamsa kamsa's father's name was ograsen now ograsen those of you are aware of uh, the whole story in the past time ograsen was a great devotee how can a great devotee have a demonic son like kamsa prabhu ji ho sakta hai prahlad ji to aaya tha renaksha irane kashyap ke irane kashyap was a demon and prahlad was a great uh, devotee that's a different story altogether but in the case of kamsa uh, kamsa was not born to ograsen actually he was born to a yaksha who had actually impersonated himself as ugrasen and he cohabited with the wife of ugrasen and the wife thought that this is my husband because of that yaksha the demon was born in the family of ugrasen by the name of kamsa nad muni in seventh canto describes the glories of kamsa's devotion not exactly devotion but his remembrance of the lord kamsa remembered lord krishna day in day out his remembrance was so far out that that his remembrance had been mentioned along with the along with the remembrance of gopis can you imagine kamsa's remembrance was so great it has been mentioned i'm going to quote the verse but i'm not quoting right now because for one reason i'll come to it his his quality or not quality matlab his quantity of remembrance i would say was so great that that has been put on the level of the remembrance of gopis so much so he would remember so many things are there imagine if his servant has brought a glass of water i mean raja maharaja hai to silver ka ya sone ka to glass hoga hi and everything was made up of emeralds and diamonds and what not if by chance a reflection will turn little bluish he'll go crazy he'll call guards guards krishna has come kill him kill him and the servant will say maharaj pani laaye hain krishna nahi aaya hai kamsa was married to two uh, queens they were daughters of jalasandha and the names of the queens were ha huh? अस्थि एन प्राप्ति तो नाम आसान है अस्थि एन प्राप्ति थैंक यू अस्थि एन प्राप्ति आई मीन व्हेन वी सी व्हाट वी डोंट रिमेंबर कृष्णा नाउ वुड एनीवन सीइंग वाइफ वी वुड रिमेंबर कृष्णा बट कमसर्स मेडिटेशन वाज सो स्ट्रांग 
one, uh, once asti and prapti both came in front of kamsa the moment he saw them somehow in the reflection of his wife he saw krishna he said guards guards kill them kill them and queen said maharaj aapki patni hai krishna kahan hai that was his remembrance so narad muni was speaking to yudhishthira maharaj makes this beautiful verse please repeat gopaya kama bhayat kamso द्वेषा चैत्यादर्पह संबंधा विष्णया स्नेहा यूय भक्त वयम विदु दिस आर साइ सीरियस ऑफ वर्सेस इन दैट दिस इज वन ऑफ द वर्सेस बट डिस्कशन इज अबाउट रिमेम्बरिंग कृष्णा इन एनी वे इज ऑल प्योरिफाइंग this was spoken prior to this verse to yudhishthira maharaj when nadmuni and then nadmuni gives an example he said don't you remember gopis remembered krishna with one mood then kamsa remembered krishna with bhayad with fear dvesha chaidadyu nupaha then there were many kings who remembered krishna out of dvesh like shishupal dantavakra sambandhad vrishnaya and then there were relatives vrishnis because of their sambandha there was an affection they remembered whatever it is whatever means one is able to remember krishna is all purifying and everyone deserves moksha liberation yuyam bhaktya vayam bhu like this nadmuni explained but in the case of kamsa his remembrance or quality of remembrance was of due to utter fear he was too, so terrified of lord shri krishna coming back uh, to krishna dev temple so i made a point that twice in the history leela salis of vrindavan had disappeared second time it had disappeared when shri chaitanya mahaprabhu went and saw there is no leela sali there are no temples nothing is there in vrindavan so let's talk about the second time when it disappeared with in relation to the history of krishna dev temple let's take a look at it krishna dev or adi keshav temple this was built by none other than the great grandson of lord shri krishna vajranath i'll speak in detail about him in the next presentation or next session then according to historical evidences it was built or rebuilt by chandragupta vikrama aditya uh, during the time from 375 to 413 ce which means the temple built by vajnap stood the test of time and it lasted for centuries and it was rebuilt by chandragupta vikrama aditya a great ruler of the gupta empire then came the last thousand years mathura for the first time was ransacked destroyed to dust was by mahmud of ghazni who lit, looted killed massacred and razed all the temples to dust the temple suffered looting even recorded in the book by the name of tarike yamini by mir munshi al utabi this is all history historical facts then the temple was raised again under maharana vijjapal dev it just right after that you know we are talking uh, 1917 after 100 years later on this temple was again raised or again built by maharana vijjapal dev which lasted for another 300 years and then came the terror of sikandar lodi jiske naam pe lodi garden delhi mein itna bada space vyartha mein lagaya hua hai this sikandar lodi who ruled from 1489 to 1517 this lodi family they, i mean they have a whole dynasty which went on until the mughals came and they uh, destroyed the lodi anyways during the reign of sikandar lodi the temple faced destruction once again this was around that time and the temple was again built in the 16th century by veer sinha judev bundela a rajput king this was at the time when uh, mughal empire uh, was already there in india delhi and jahangir was the king at that point of time and to protect for the demolition the king had built a very strong wall uh, the remnants of it is still there remaining of those strong walls like that and which didn't lasted for many years just few decades down the line 
Jahangir was a, a dethroned and then eventually came Aurangzeb. I believe 1670 onwards was Aurangzeb on the seat or 1650 onwards up to 1708 until he died. Then Aurangzeb came and he also destroyed but he could not destroy it fully. He destroyed it partly and he had a particular signature statement which he would always do. He will destroy and build a mosque. He will destroy and build a mosque. Probably none of you are aware of it. Govind Dev Temple, I'm going to speak about the history of Govind Dev Temple when we come to Vrindavan either here or in Vrindavan Yatra. <coughs> Govind Dev Temple that we visit today, when it was destroyed by Aurangzeb, it had become a mosque. It was only in the late 18th, early 19th century, we regained it as a temple. For over 300 years, it had become a mosque and things were done according to Islamic code of conduct. I'll give you that history that time, just to tell you what was the thing. So wherever this whole concept of mosque comes, that happened under the Aurangzeb rule like this. So Aurangzeb, Mughal Emperor, yeah, 1618, sorry, not 15, 1618. 1618 was his, actually his birth. He came to power after 1615 only. Like this, yeah, 1658. Uh, he destroyed this and erected a mosque. And this led to the existence of the Muslim mosque as adjacent to the Keshav Dev temple at Mathura. Anyways, this is a little history. Uh, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had come, uh, you know, uh, 1515. So therefore, there were hardly any Lilas were remaining, as I gave you the little history about it. Because at least three times, Mathura had been completely demolished and the less than three or four hundred years, completely. So much so, even the people, residents living there who were Vrajwasis, they didn't knew where the Leela Thalis. Are they in my town or other town like this? After having a tour of Parikama of Vinda or Mathura, then Sri Chaitanya Maha moved to, or Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started the 12 forests of Vrindavan Parikama. I will just discuss the first forest today and we'll continue our discussion in future after discussing. So as I said, according to Padma Puran, there are 12 forests, and these 12 forests are identified or recognized, are they on the western or the eastern shore of Yamuna? So there are seven forests on the western shore of Yamuna, and there are five forests on the eastern shore of Yamuna. And we'll begin our yatra with the western shore, and the very first forest which comes right next to Mathura, hardly five kilometers away from Mathura is Madhuvan and has a very interesting story. Madhu, you know, honey, we say. So how did it got a name Madhuvan? We'll look into it. But Madhuvan is one of the forests where the Lord has visited in all the yuga, Satya Yuga, Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga and Kali Yuga. I would begin with narration from Treta Yuga because I have a pending story to finish. And that pending story is how did Vara Dev, who finally came to Ayodhya, and from Ayodhya, how did Vara Dev Diti came to Mathura? And this lines up with the story of how did that particular piece of land became Mathura? There was no Mathura before. Then when did it become Mathura? The story is from Treta Yuga. <clears throat> so Mathura and Madhuvan, they are just adjacent forests. Okay, so in Treta Yuga, there was a demon by the name of Madhu. There are different opinions about him. Some place it is mentioned that he was pious. His son, Lavana Sur, was demoniac. Somewhere it is mentioned that he was also impious and so was his son. Anyways, this Madhu demon was wandering around and he came to a place a forest which was known as Madhuvan. Madhuvan was not named after Madhu. It is said that he, Madhuvan got a name after Madhu, but Madhuvan existed, the name existed even in Satya Yuga. I'll give you Shastra references for it in a short while. So Madhu demon came there and he was amazed at the beautiful beauty of this forest and decided to set his capital there. So when you set your capital in those days, you will call it as Puri. And then Madhuvan became Madhupuri. And that Madhupuri became Mathura. 
and that happened in treta yuga so this madhu demon was a great devotee of lord shiva and lord shiva was pleased and he asked madhu what do you want <laughs> madhu said my dear lord shiva i want your trident <laughs> shiva said tum asuro ka kuch bharosa nahi hota kuch bhi mang le to i cannot give my trident but i'll give you something almost as powerful as my trident then when he got the trident then madhu said my dear lord i have one more one more blessing to ask lord said what shiva ji said what he said i have one more blessing to ask is that this trishul that you have given it should never ever go away from my family it should remain with my family lineage and that's the time lord shiva said well it's not going to happen because you're going to have a very very great demoniac son by the name of lavana sur and he would be killed by the lord and that's the time this trishul will come back to me so madhu could not do anything eventually over a period of time he had a son which was named lavana sur any bengali here what is lavana in bengali means salty so if you go to brindavan and if you ask the elderly brajwasis brindavan ka pani thoda khara hota hai agar aap pucho ke brindavan ka pani khara kyon hai bolenge ye jo dusht lavana sur tha na uska khoon bahata hai yahan tab se pani khara ho gaya hai <laughs> so that's they will say they connect with that so this lav so madhu uh, got this trishul and he had a son by the name of lavana sur who was extremely demoniac he was asura when he would go to play with kids and khelte khelte bhook lagti thi bachcho ko kaccha kha jata tha asura tha na man eating so he would eat that was used to be snacks huh? uh, so i don't you don't want me to describe his dinner in that case what will be the dinner with the snacks or like this so according to one version madhu was frustrated trying to help him out and then he left to the forest and lavana sur became a king now he was like a demonic person what demonic person want they want to be the controller of all they perceive all the survey so he wanted everyone in his kingdom and all around to chant his name lavana sur bhagwan ki jai like that he wanted and that's what people began to do like this and that kind of time his terrors fell uh, spread far and wide everyone was afraid of him every morning he will go out for hunting you know he would prepare his own breakfast so every morning he'll go out of his palace go to the forest and capture and kill wild elephants lion tiger bear deer snake crocodile and carry on his back and that used to be his every morning breakfast so right i should not get into the menu of lavana sur okay aap log raat ka menu kharab ho jayega <laughs> nonetheless like this chavyana rishi who came into bhagu dynasty he was very disturbed because this lavana sur had caused terror all around and he was really disturbing sadhus and sages he was not letting them live either he would kill them or else he would destroy their yagya so that chavyana rishi on the request of his uh, other sadhus went to Lord Ram at Ayodhya. This is all after Ravana's pastime and all that has happened. This comes in Valmiki Ramayan, and this Shavana Rishi went to Lord Ram and he said, "Such a such story is there. There is a big asura by the name of Lavana Sur, who lives in a place called as Madhuban. Please come and kill him. But let me tell you about him." And this Shavana Rishi then narrated a story of Lavana Sur's strength, and he said. there was a great king by the name of king mamdatta he was so powerful so powerful ki usne keval prithvi ke raja ko nahi haraya usne samast devtao ko bhi hara diya jo finally wo indra se ladne ja raha tha to indra ne kaha ruko 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 abhi ek raja reh gaya hai dharti pe jisko tumne nahi haraya hai kaun hai lavana sur agar tum usko hara dete to tab mere paas aana and this great great king very powerful mamdatta came back to earth and he went to fight lavana sur he challenged lavana sur with a huge army he went to attack lavana sur's kingdom when lavana sur came out of the kingdom he came out alone he had lost shivji's trishul and he pointed that trishul to the whole army it was like a fire flamer aur se aisi agni nikli us trishul se ki sare ki sari mandata ki jo army thi wahi jalkar raakh ho gayi yahan tak ki vah raja bhi जिंदा जल गया एंड लावन असुर हैड अ ग्रेट फीस्ट 
so then chavana rishi said well before lord ram you agree to fight you should know who lavana sur is so lord ram then said all right understood then he called his brothers you know bharat lakshman and shatrughan and then lord ram said so who would like to go and serve the sages and protect the sages by killing lavana sur so bharat maharaj is the next after lord ram to so bharat maharaj said prabhu ram main jaunga तुरंत शत्रुघ्न जी बोल पड़े हे भरत हे भरत महाराज हे भरत भैया आपको जाने की क्या जरूरत है आपने ऑलरेडी अपने जीवन में इतना संघर्ष करा है आपने भी चौदह साल का वनवास किया है सूखा खाया है इतने सारे कष्ट आपने सहन करे हैं आपको इस छोटे से दानव के लिए जाने की जरूरत ही नहीं है इसको मारने के लिए तो मैं चला जाऊंगा और जैसे उन्होंने ये कहा और भगवान राम शत्रुघ्न की तरफ देखते हैं ऑल राइट right. शत्रुघ्न बहुत अच्छी बात कर रहे हैं शत्रुघ्न तुम ही जाओ तुरंत शत्रुघ्न बोलते हैं प्रभु राम लगता है थोड़ी गलती हो गई है छोटों को बड़ों के सामने बोलना नहीं चाहिए भैया भरत आप ही जाओ आपके पीछे पीछे पे आता हूं एंड देन लॉर्ड राम सेड ही सेड शत्रुघ्न वॉट यू सेड इज वेरी राइट योर ह्यूमिलिटी इज वेल नोटेड बट अब तो मैं चाहूंगा कि अब तुम ही जाओ और सदावन सुर के बार के आओ Then Shatrughan said, "Now knowing that there is no way of coming out, तो so, उन्होंने कहा, 'हे hey, प्रभु राम, अगर आपका आदेश है, तो मैं जाऊंगा, पर मेरी भी एक कंडीशन है.' राम ने कहा, 'क्या कंडीशन है? मैं ये युद्ध तभी जीत सकता हूँ जब मेरे पे वराहदेव का आशीर्वाद होगा. कृपा करके मुझे वराहदेव का जो विग्रह है, आप मुझे मेरे संग लेकर जाने की आज्ञा दें.' And like that, Varadev came along with Shatrughan to Madhuvan. Anyways, now there is a fight. So when uh, Shatrughan reached along with Chavan and Rishi, so Chavan and Rishi ne uh, Shatrughan ko bataya ki Lavana Sur ko harana ha impossible hai. Ki jab tak Shivji ka trishul hai, that is blessed. Nobody can defeat. But unne kaha ki subhe sirf ek aisa mohrat hota hai jab ye Rakshas apni breakfast ki khoj mein jata hai. और तब वह शिवजी का त्रिशूल लेके नहीं जाता, बल्कि साधारण त्रिशूल लेके जाता है. Agar aapne us samay usko larkara. और अगर आप उस पर विजय प्राप्त करके तो हरा सकते हैं दैट्स व्हाट हैपेंड एंड दैट्स हाउ शत्रुघ्न फॉट विद लावना सुर एंड फाइनली किल्ड हिम एंड आफ्टर किलिंग हिम देन ही एस्टैब्लिश्ड हिज सिटी और हिज पैलेस एट मधुवन दैट वाज मथुरा सो एक्चुअली मथुरा नेम कम्स इन कॉन्टेक्स्ट और इन रिलेशन विद शत्रुघ्न ही एस्टैब्लिश मथुरा सिटी एंड उस मथुरा सिटी में सबसे पहला जो विग्रह था वो था वराहदेव का वह वराहदेव का विग्रह जो आया था ब्रह्मा जी के हाथों से जो ब्रह्मा जी ने स्वयं बनाया था दिस इज हाउ द स्टोरी ऑफ मथुरा एंड दिस इज हाउ इट केम दिस इज नाइन्थ कैंटो श्रीमद भागवतम में भी इसका उल्लेख आता है शत्रुघ्ना है टू सन्स नेम सुबाह श्रुत सेना वे लॉर्ड भरत वेन टू कॉन्कर ऑल डायरेक्शन ही हैड टू किल मैनी मिलियंस ऑफ गंधर्वास वो जनरली प्रिटेंडर्स taking all their wealth he offered it to lord ramachandra shatrughan also killed a rakshan rakshasa by the name of lavana who was a son of madhu rakshasa thus he established in the great forest known as madhuvan the town known as mathura and that's how mathura puri got its name from the lord so in treta yuga shatrughan went now shatrughan is also vishnu incarnation so that way in treta yuga shatrughan went but in satya yuga also the lord went there a lord appeared in madhuvan and the story comes of dhruva maharaj i am not going to go into the details of the story of dhruva maharaj dhruva son of <coughs> utanapad and sunati what was utanapad's capital where did utanapad lived the son of swayambhuva manu Is there anyone from Kanpur here? So, ये आपके पड़ोस में तो रहे थे। आपके पड़ोस में जो बिट्ठूर है, that was the capital of Swayamvu Manu. Later on became the capital of Utanapad. और बिट्ठूर में आज भी वो जगह उपलब्ध है। मैं खुद गया हूँ वहाँ पर, जहाँ पे भरत ये ध्रुव महाराज का पैलेस कहा जाता था। Not ध्रुव महाराज पैलेस, but yeah, the palace where he left for Madhuvan. ध्रुव महाराज and his mother Sunitis. Palace was there like this. Anyways, the Bittu place. So, uh, as we know, Dhruva Maharaj was five year old, and his stepmother Suruchi 
उन्होंने ध्रुव महाराज को अपने पिता उत्थान की गोद में बैठने नहीं दिया जिससे ध्रुव महाराज की काफी बेजती हुई और वह ध्रुव महाराज जब रोते रोते अपनी माँ सुनीति के पास आते हैं तो माँ सुनीति जिन्होंने अपने वरिष्ठों से सुना था कि अगर भगवान की खोज करनी है तो वन में जाओ तो बस ध्रुव को शांत करने के लिए कह देती हैं ध्रुव वन में जाओ के तो प्रभु मिलेंगे और ध्रुव भी एक क्षत्रिय था माँ की बात को सुन के वो जंगल में चले जाते हैं और तब उनको वहां पे नारद मुनि मिलते हैं और नारद मुनि उस ध्रुव महाराज के समक्ष ये श्लोक कहते हैं तत्त गद्रे यमुनायास्तम सुची पुण्य मधुवन यानिध्यम नित्यदा हरि ये सत्य युग में नारद मुनि ध्रुव महाराज को बता रहे हो क्या कह रहे हैं तत्त गच्छ भद्रम ते आप उस जगह जाएं जो बहुत ऑस्पिशियस है भद्रम यमुनायास तटम सुचि ही कौन सी वो ऑस्पिशियस जगह है वो यमुना के तट के पास आती है क्या नाम है उसको कहा जाता है पुण्य नगरी या पुण्य वन जिसका नाम है मधुवनम सानिध्यम नित्य दाहरी और वहां पे हरि हमेशा रहते हैं वहां जाओगे तो आपको हरि का सानिध्य या संग प्राप्त होगा इस प्रकार से ध्रुव महाराज ने आके वहां तपस्या करी थी और उनको विष्णु का साक्षात्कार हुआ था कहां पर मधुवन सत्ययुग केवल सत्ययुग में मधुवन या ध्रुव महाराज ही मधुवन नहीं गए थे पर एक और भक्त सत्ययुग में मधुवन गए थे मैंने एक तो उदाहरण दिया लेट मी आंसर Who was the another very very great devotee who had visited Madhuvan, and he had performed tapasya for one whole year at Madhuvan, and that was Ambrish Maharaj. Vartante kati ke masi, tri ratram samuposhita. स्नाता कदाचित कालिंद्या हरि मधुवनेच्छत नाइन्थ कैंट ऑफ फोर्थ चैप्टर वर्स नंबर थर्टी इन द मंथ ऑफ कार्तिका आफ्टर ऑब्जर्विंग दैट वाव फॉर वन ईयर फास्ट फॉर थ्री नाइट्स एंड आफ्टर बेथिंग इन द यमुना महाराज अम्बरीश वर्शिप द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी गॉर्डेड हरि इन मधुवन और ये वही जगह है जहाँ दुर्वास मुनि आए थे और अमरीश ने कहा कि दुर्वास जी आप प्रसादों में बैठ करिए दुर्वास जी का मैं स्नान करके आता हूँ यमुना में इतने में पालना का टाइम खत्म हो रहा था और अमरीश महाराज जो पिछले एक साल से एकादशी का व्रत कर रहे थे पिछली एकादशी से लेकर अब द्वादशी तक उसी एकादशी की द्वादशी तक अब उनका जब उस व्रत को तोड़ने का समय आया जो निकलता जा रहा था और दुर्वास मुनि कहीं नजर नहीं आए तो उन्होंने अपने साधु संघ समाज से सलाह मशुरा करके उन्होंने पानी की दो बूंदे स्वीकार करनी शास्त्रों के अनुसार अगर पानी ग्रहण करते हैं तो उसे व्रत टूटता भी है नहीं भी टूटता ये निर्जल व्रत की बात है एकादशी खाना खाने के बाद प्रसाद मत तोड़ना <laughs> वो नहीं ये निर्जल वालों के लिए है सो जब जब अमरीश महाराज उस प्रकार से अपना फास्ट तोड़ते हैं तो दुर्वास मुनि आते हैं और दुर्वास मुनि को पता चल जाता है कि ऐसे ऐसे अमरीश महाराज ने आ, एक प्रकार से साधु की निंदा करी है साधु को पहले सर्व करना चाहिए और दुर्वासा वो इज एन एक्सपेंशन ऑफ लॉर्ड शिवा क्रोध ही बिकम सो एंग्री ही प्लग अ हेयर अच्छा है भगवान प्रभुपा जी ने कहा कि यू नो साधु को छोटी शिखा रखनी चाहिए कम बाल होंगे तो कम निकलेंगे <laughs> सो दुर्वासा मुनि की बड़ी जटाई थी उनमें से एक आध निकल भी गए तो कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता तो उन्होंने उधर से एक अपनी बाल निकाल के जमीन पर डालकर एक बहुत बड़ा असुर को जन्म दिया जिसका उद्देश्य था उससे अम्बरीश महाराज को खत्म करने की बहुत खूबसूरत कहानी आती है अंत में यही होता है अम्बरीश महाराज बिल्कुल भी घबराते नहीं है वहीं खड़े रहते हैं और भगवान जी का सुदर्शन चक्र आकर उस राक्षस का वध करने के बाद दुर्वास मुनि के पीछे दौड़ने लगता है दुर्वास मुनि पूरे ब्रह्मांड में भगवान शिव ब्रह्मा जी इत्यादि सभी के पास शरण ले लेते हैं पर कोई भी नहीं उनकी रक्षा कर पाते तो अंत में दुर्वास मुनि वैकुंठ पहुंचते हैं और वैकुंठ में जाके वह शिव वैष्णु जी से प्रार्थना करते हैं और जब विष्णु जी से प्रार्थना करते हैं पाही माँ मेरी रक्षा करिए अपने सुदर्शन चक्र से तो समय विष्णु जी ये दिस इज वन ऑफ द ब्यूटिफुल सेक्शन ऑफ भागवतम आई जस्ट को टू वर्स इज वन ऑफ माई फेवरेट सियर एंड देन विष्णु से समथिंग वेरी प्रोफाउंड विद विच आई वुड लाइक टू कंक्लूड अवर टूडेज डिस्कशन एंड लॉर्ड विष्णु सेट और 
भगवान उवाच श्री भगवान उवाच अहम भक्ता पराधीनो ही अस्वतंत्र इवादुजा साधु भोग्रस्त हृदय भक्तर भक्ता जना प्रिय दिस इज दिस इज दि हाइट दिस इज दि वर्स अहम भक्ता पराधीन हो मैं तो अपने भक्त के अधीन हूं हे दुर्वास मुनि मैं कुछ भी स्वतंत्र रूप से कर ही नहीं सकता मैं जो करता हूं वह मेरे भक्त निर्धारित करते हैं केवल ये नहीं उसके आगे भी है ही अस्वतंत्र इवा द्विजा ये द्विजा मतलब हे ब्राह्मण देवता मेरी तो कोई स्वतंत्रता है ही नहीं आप मुझसे अपने प्राणों की रक्षा मांगने आए पर मैं वह स्वतंत्र निर्णय ले ही नहीं सकता क्योंकि मैं अपने भक्तों के अधीन रहता हूं साधु भी ग्रस्त हृदय और फिर उदाहरण देते हुए बताते हैं भगवान कैसे आधीन जो साधु है मेरे भक्त हैं उन्होंने अपने हृदय में मुझे बांध कर रखा हुआ है एंड देन कम्स द ब्यूटी हियर भक्त भक्त जना प्रिय केवल भक्त ही नहीं भक्त को जो प्रिय होते हैं वह भी मुझे बहुत प्रिय होते हैं इवन इफ वी कैन नॉट परफॉर्म डिवोशनल सर्विस बट इवन इफ इफ वी कैन जस्ट प्लीज वन वैष्णवा एंड इफ दैट वैष्णवा गेट्स प्लीज Lord Vishnu is saying, "You become dear to me, just because we serve one Vaishnava." Like that, he uh, like that. Lord Vishnu tells the Vasamani. In other words, don't come to me. Go and talk to Ambrish Maharaj. And then the last verse, another very beautiful verse: "Sadhavo hide yam riyam." Jo sadhu hote hain, wo sadev mere hide mein virajman karte hain. साधु नाम हृदय तुम हम अहम आई और मैं इसी प्रकार उन साधु के हृदय में हमेशा विराजमान करता हूं मद अन्य न जानती मेरे भक्त जो है मेरे अलावा किसी चीज को वह नहीं जानते ना हम ते भ्यो मना उसी प्रकार मैं भी अपने भक्तों के अलावा कुछ और नहीं जानता फास्ट फॉरवर्ड द्वापर युग एंड ऑफ द वर्ल्ड एवरीथिंग हैज हैपेंड युधिष्ठिर महाराज हैज बीन कोरोनेटेड द किंग वन ऑफ माय फेवरेट पास्ट टाइम फ्रॉम महाभारत एंड वेरी नेक्स्ट मॉर्निंग युधिष्ठिर महाराज गोस टू द पैलेस ऑफ कृष्णा रिक्वेस्टिंग कृष्णा की भगवान आपने कहा था मैं राज्य अभिषेक करा लूंगा तो आप मुझे भीष्म पितामह के पास लेके जाएंगे चलिए तो जब वहां युधिष्ठिर महाराज पहुंचते हैं साढ़े चार बजे करीब उनकी बात होती है वो देखते हैं भगवान श्री कृष्ण ध्यान मुद्रा में बैठे हुए हैं कई घंटों तक ध्यान मुद्रा में बैठे रहते हैं जब वो आंख खोलते हैं तो युधिष्ठ महाराज बड़ी विनम्रता से पूछते हैं प्रभु अगर आपको लगता है मैं लायक हूं इस प्रश्न के जवाब के लिए तो कृपा करके मेरी जिज्ञासा का आ, क्या कहते हैं समाधान करिए गिमी द आंसर टू माई क्वेरी लॉर्ड कृष्ण सेड वॉट इज योर क्वेरी एंड भगवान ने कहा और युधिष्ठ ने कहा हे प्रभु ये समस्त विश्व या समस्त जीव जंतु आप पर ध्यान लगाकर बैठते हैं आप किस पर ध्यान लगा रहे हैं यह बहुत महत्वपूर्ण प्रश्न है श्रीमद भागवत दूसरे स्कंध में नाद मुनि ब्रह्मा जी से पूछते हैं प्रभु सब लोग तो आपको पूछते हैं आप ब्रह्मा जी किसको पूछते हैं तो तब ब्रह्मा जी कहते हैं मैं विष्णु को पूछता हूं दशाउ चतुर्थ श्लोक की भागवतम कंस एंड युधिष्ठ महाराज आज प्रभु आप किस पर ध्यान लगाकर बैठे हैं राइट एग्जैक्टली दिस वर्ष then krishna said i am meditating on that person who is meditating on me main kis pe dhyan laga ke baitha hu main bhishma pitamah pe dhyan laga raha hu aur vah bhishma pitamah mere par dhyan laga kar baithe hue hain that's a point that's a beauty and finally durvasa muni came he fell with all humility at the feet of amrish maharaj amrish maharaj ne turant unko alingan kiya और जो भी वो सुदर्शन चक्र का खतरा था उस प्रकार से वह समाप्त हो जाता है लाइक दिस दिस ब्यूटीफुल पास टाइम हैव अकर्ड इन मधुवन एक डोंट रिमेम्बर द नेम राइट नाउ पर इन अदर टेक्स्ट इट इज मेंशन कि वृंदावन में कहीं पर भी अगर आपको स्नान करने का मौका मिले तो जन्म जन्मांतर के पाप कर्मों से व्यक्ति मुक्त हो जाता है सो दैट वुड बी अनदर अपॉर्चुनिटी इन परिक्रमा इन दिस होली प्लेस टू टेक बाथ एंड टू प्योरीफाई योर मधुबन हैव टू थ्री अदर प्लेसेस टू कंक्लूड विद
दिस इज कॉल एस कृष्ण कुंड यहाँ पर एक दिन भगवान श्री कृष्ण ने अपनी बांसुरी को जमीन पे गाड़ा था और जहाँ पे आगे जाके कुंड बना था जहाँ पर उन्होंने कहते हैं वट यू से द होली रिवर्स को इन्वाइट कर कर वहाँ पे कुंड की स्थापना करी थी जिसमें गायों ने आके पानी पिया था दिस कृष्ण कुंड इज देयर और इसी के पास बलराम जी का वो वरुणी पास टाइम हुआ था तो कृष्ण कुंड के ही पास में दाऊ जी का मंदिर है वन यूनिक थिंग इन वृंदावन इज हमने स्टार्टिंग में देखा था प्रभुपा जी ने कहा कि मैं इस कौन मंदिर की स्थापना कर रहा हूँ क्यों कर रहा हूँ क्योंकि वहां पर कोई वर, कोई बड़ा कृष्ण बलराम का टेम्पल नहीं है अरे वृंदावन में कृष्ण बलराम का टेम्पल ना कैसे पॉसिबल है यस yes, वृंदावन में दाऊ जी के टेम्पल मिलेंगे कृष्ण बलराम के टेम्पल नहीं मिलेंगे सो so, इस प्रकार से दाऊ जी का मंदिर है यहाँ पे वह अपने कॉन्सोर्ट किसन खड़े हुए हैं एक हाथ से ब्लेसिंग है और दूसरे हाथ पे उन्होंने एक ग्लास पकड़ा हुआ है वो ग्लास में क्या है आप लोग के लिए मैं होमवर्क देता हूँ ढूंढ के आइएगा अरे ग्लास क्यों पकड़ा हुआ है बलराम जी ने सोचिएगा नहीं होता है तो क्लास के अंत में या जब आप प्रसाद खा लेंगे अगर आपका मन शांत ना हो अगर मैं हूं तो मैं उत्तर दे दूंगा पर थिंक अबाउट वाई लॉर्ड बलराम जी इज लेफ्ट एंड होल्डिंग अ ग्लास विद राइट हैंड इज गिविंग ब्लैसिंग एंड वेन वी गो टू वृंदावन परिक्रमा विच एवर दाऊ जी टेम्पल विल गो एंड सी यू सी दाऊ जी लिटरली स्टैंडिंग इन दैट पोस्ट Even if he is holding his what you call cowherd stick or that bugle, in one of the hand he would still have a glass. अरे पवुजी आपको ये glass से इतना प्रेम क्यों है? Because that's a particular uh, presentation of Lord Balram or Lord Dawji. So with that we kind of conclude our first presentation on this topic of our parikrama. Just to do a quick recap, uh, I begin with talking about Shri Prabhupada's contribution. and giving access to us to vrindavan then i spoke about how shila prabhupada ji ne apne proper ke madhyam se hame sikhaya hai vrindavan ko kaise samajhna chahiye vrindavan ko kaise approach karna chahiye aur usme humne sabse pehle baat kahi ki prabhupada ne bataya about the the spiritual potency of vrindavan vrindavan mein rehne ka kitna mahatv hai par sath hi sath ye bhi samjhaya ki vrindavan mein rehne ke liye kya quality ya qualification hona chahiye fir humne teesri baat kari कि अरे भौतिक दृष्टिकोण से वृंदावन बड़ा दूषित दिखता है तो वृंदावन को कैसे समझा जाना चाहिए उसके बारे में बात हुई और उसके बाद बात करी वृंदावन इज नॉट अबाउट डेमोग्राफी और जियोग्राफी का लोकेशन वृंदावन इज कॉन्शियसनेस ऐसे बहुत बहुत महान भक्त रहे हैं जो कभी भी वृंदावन नहीं गए सो इज नॉट समथिंग का वृंदावन नहीं गए वृंदावन नहीं रहे तो हमारी भक्ति नहीं हो सकती है लास्ट पॉइंट प्रोपाद मेड जहां पर भी इस कौन का मंदिर है प्रोपर सेड दैट इज अवर वृंदावन एंड वी शुड स्टे देर एंड सर्व देर एंड आफ्टर दैट वी स्टार्टेड अवर डिस्कशन सेइंग दैट श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु परिक्रमा पे आए थे और परिक्रमा क्या होती है परिक्रमा शब्द आता है प्रदक्षिणा से और फिर हमने श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु की परिक्रमा की बात करी जब वह पंद्रह पंद्रह में पहुंचे थे तो वह वृंदावन लुप्त हो चुका था उसका इतिहास हमने आगे जाके आपको समझाया सबसे पहले मथुरा मथुरा में विश्राम घाट में स्नान लिया तो विश्राम घाट का इतिहास क्या है वो बताया था भगवान श्री कृष्ण कमसा को वध करने के बाद आए थे और उसी विश्राम घाट पर सत्य युग में सबसे पहले वराह देव आए थे और उन्हीं वराह देव का विग्रह विश्राम घाट से थोड़ी ही दूरी पर जो आज द्वारकाधीश का मंदिर है उसके बराबर में आता है लाल वराह एंड श्वेत वराह और जो लाल वराह जो विग्रह है वह ब्रह्मा जी के द्वारा स्थापित किया गया था वहां से कुबेर कुबेर से लंका लंका से अयोध्या अयोध्या से शत्रुगन लावना सुर राक्षस को मारने के लिए अपने संग वरादेव का विग्रह मथुरा लेकर आए मधुबन और वहां से उन्होंने मथुरापुरी की स्थापना करी वहां से फिर आगे मूवते हैं केशव महाराज या आदि केशव मंदिर आदि केशव मंदिर क्या है वह है भगवान श्री कृष्ण का जन्म स्थान कम से कौन थे और किस प्रकार से भगवान श्री कृष्ण की थोड़ी लीला हुई है उसके लिए यू कैन रीड फोर्टी वन टू फोर्टी थर्ड और फोर्टी फोर्थ चैप्टर वैन कृष्णा एंटर्ड मथुरा मैंने उसमें ज्यादा चर्चा नहीं करा एंड उसके बाद हमने उस आदि केशव टेम्पल का इतिहास का चर्चा किया मैंने कहा इतिहास में दो बार वृंदावन की लीलाएं लुप्त हो चुकी हैं एक पांच हजार साल पहले लुप्त हुई थी और कुछ एक हजार साल पहले लुप्त हुई उसका क्रोनोलॉजिकल हमने आपको बताया कि कब कब इस्लामिक इन्वेजन के कारण वो लुप्त हुई किस किस ने उसको स्थापित किया फाइनली औरंगजेब ने मंदिर को तोड़ के वहां मस्जिद बांध दी इसलिए आज मस्जिद और मंदिर दोनों साथ में बने हुए हैं उसका और भी डिटेल्स हैं आई डेंट गोट मच डिटेल्स बट आई जस्ट कैप माई फोकस ऑन हिस्ट्री और फिर वहां से केशव जी का दर्शन लेने के बाद फिर श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु स्टार्टेड परिक्रमा ऑफ द ट्वेल्थ फॉरेस्ट 
and there are seven forests on the western shore of Yamuna and five forests on the eastern shore. Also, the first forest is Madhuvan. And in Madhuvan, in Satya Yug, Treta Yug, Dwapa Yug, Kali Yug, in four Yugs, Bhagavan is there. In Satya Yug, we have Vishnu Ji, Dhruv Maharaj to give the blessing. Ambrish Maharaj was there for the purpose of Tapasya. In Treta Yug, we had a blessing in Shatru. In the Dwapa Yug, there was a different way to Krishna, which was a Krishna Kundak ki sthapna hai waha par. In the Dwapa Yug, Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bhi gaya te. Waha waha pe dekhne ke liye Madhuban mein Krishna Kund sthaan aur Dao Ji ka mandir hai. Aur iske aage, ab hum jab agle Rabi Baad ko milenge, then we'll go a little bit more in the history, more, more back in the history, 5,000 years ago. And we'll talk about uh, interesting conversation that happened between Vajranab and Parishit. How did Vrindavan manifest it? Or why did, Vrind why did Vajranab establish Vrindavan again? What was the whole situation and scenario we'll discuss? And then we'll continue our Parikama along with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with other forests. Next forest will be Talavan. Any past time comes to your mind what had happened in Talavan? Huh? Dhenukasur. I don't remember Dhenukasur, I don't remember Tala Fruit. Anyways, either way both are correct. So with that, we pause here for today. Jagaduru Vishila Prabhupada Ki Shri Vindavan Dhamma Ki Hare Krishna.